What's going on? Welcome to the Build Series live here in New York City. I'm Kevin Kenny, and our guest today was just named by Rolling Stone Magazine, one of the 10 artists you need to know this year in the world of music. They've got a brand new record out to my side, if you can see that. Green Balloon, out and available everywhere now. And uh, they're taking some photos in the back. But in the meantime, let's welcome Tank and the Bangas. <laughs> You can't tell at home, but we were just watching the music video here in the studio, and we got a round of applause also from the band. You guys like your own work. That's, yes. It yes. starts with self-love, right? That's what they say? Always. It's like the yeah. artists that drew it. They added a lot of yeah. details. Oh. You got a mic? Yeah. Oh, there we go. We really like the artists that drew it. I was intrigued. Was Every time artist? we watch it, we see you something different Frank? that we never noticed. Yeah. I mean, how, how did that come about with the artists? Was that a friend? Was that a collaborator? Crazy story, we in Rotterdam, right? Yeah. And um, some some people are trying to get in the show, but they can't get in because there's no more tickets. They came all the way from France, and they wanted to show us a video that they did of us um, based off our tiny desk. They made an entire video, just something really weird. And um, I was like, damn, they should be a part of like our lives and you know, like real life. Everyday life. Was the video like that? Was it sort of like it wasn't like that? It was, to... I can't even explain how it was. It was so weird it was and cool. Weird. It, it was, was like stop little motion. Mini cardboard <laughs> no versions of us, little foods like yeah. They had boxes yeah. about. Like, she's naming a lot of food, so they had different foods around, and then they had throwing foods in animations, a bowl. Yeah, just throwing kind of food, still animations of us. But it was set to the Tiny Desk concert. Yes, yeah. Yeah. that's really it was, cool. It was People very go, creative, right. and so um, we called them and told them that we wanted an illustration done because I'm saying a lot of words here, so people could try to understand it and get it, and uh. Um, he sent a young lady to do it, and she spent like 20. forty plus hours just covered in a in a room, dark with one light, yeah. drawing constantly. She was doing like 20, 22 hours at a time. Yeah. She lost all her vision, but it was worth it. Yeah. It was, it was worth it. It was. We hope she's well. <laughs> uh, Take. I wanted to ask you because when I when I hear your lyrics and I hear you perform, it sounds like a stream of consciousness, right? It sounds like it's unfolding before my ears, if you will. Mm -hmm. And artistically, visually, that's kind of how it comes across in the video. Do you see any parallels personally between how she draws and how that unfolds to how your own thought process is creatively? For sure, especially like when they when they made this song, when the guys were sitting there and and making this music in the studio, I wrote it so quickly. <laughs> I wrote it right then and there. And I had all these memories of middle school, because that's what most of that's about, middle school and life in New Orleans. And um, it, it came just like that. I wrote it really quickly. I'm very proud of myself. Where did the song title, Tank, where did the song yeah, title come we, from? We're so proud of you. Oh, where did the song title come from? Okay, so while y'all are creating the music, um, I was just going through my Spotify playlist, and uh, I saw something that said Empire Ants. And I said, Gorillas. Where do the ants go? Song. All right. Like it should be called yeah. ants. There you go. Touch Magic. Now, you guys are, you know, you you're, you come from New Orleans, but not everyone is from New Orleans originally. Is it? Yeah, right? yeah, sadly, be more. Sadly there you here go. Or not. I knew Baltimore is in the house. Right. No, Alabama. Right. Alabama. Montgomery. Roll Tide. Three, three, four. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Man, the haters are here, bro. Or eagle. Ooh. <laughs> and then everybody else, New Orleans. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Great. Now, uh, I, it's probably a long story, but if there's a short version, how did we all meet? Oh. Short version? That's Norman's job. Short yeah. version, uh, me, Tang, and Josh met at an open mic. Okay. And I, met, Black Star I met Merle Books playing Cafe. with another band, band. He already knew Tank, but brought him over. And then um, I met Al. I walked in a Bible study, and they got this white guy sitting on sax, you know, just out the blue. I'm like, hey, man, you sound good, blah, blah, blah. I said, you play flute, too? We was trying to pull off J. Cole Power Trip. He, and he pulled it off? Oh, man, he, he nailed it. He's been with us ever since, bro. Straight up. Dude, he, he begged our manager. He said, take me with you after his first show. <laughs> That's true. Is it true you started playing sax because of the Sade music video? That is also true. Can you tell that story? <laughs> yeah, my dad just thought this guy with the glasses and, and big shoulder pads and a tenor, and he just thought he looked cool, and he was like, maybe you should do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so, That's it's what your cool, dad it's told such you? It's a cool music video. You know, That's your dad told you maybe you should do that. He was like, maybe you should do that. Your dad encouraged you to do that, but every now and then while you was playing it, he came in your room and said, you sure you don't want to work on the brain, son? Yeah, yeah. He would do it. He was very he was very nervous about the the, the practical as a musician life possibilities of yeah music. everybody and parents uh yeah. wasn't extremely maybe your mom was what? um encouraging about this lifestyle yeah. i feel like she was the most supportive i of this think band. she was yeah the most she was there like at the shows you know yeah, what i'm saying all of them. like yes. not even uh, no lie not even my dad my dad was like electric engineer like you know what i'm saying mm. 
like an engineer job or, or go to trade school, trade, right? right. I'm all like, I'm all like, you gonna finish college? Music. Once he heard music, he was like, uh, I don't know about that. All right, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> when did he flip? Get a job. When did he flip? Like last year. <laughs> <laughs> when he came to Jazz last Fest, y'all. Year, <laughs> last year, me and my dad had a heartfelt conversation. He was like, son, I'm really proud of you guys. <laughs> I was like, geez. I think it's going to work out. Dad, my dad flipped when I got that it. scholarship to college. And he was like, all right, no, you can do it. Maybe, maybe you can do <laughs> it. I don't something. have to pay. Keep doing your thing, right? Keep doing I it. think yeah. my family's still flipping, like. My my dad, I think he still wants me to get a job. It's the, it depends but, on the day. <laughs> but my mom, she's coming around. She, go. she got an album. She done been to some shows. Okay. Right. And we did Jimmy Fallon. She had to, oh, yeah. she came up and okay. did that from both. I was like, all right, mom. How was that doing Jimmy Fallon? Bruh. That's always Ooh, it was cool, crazy. man. Crazy. It's very surreal, bad. right? Yeah. Surreal. Because you watch it on TV and then you're just you're in that 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 room. You're like, wow, it looks just like it did. It look Both. just like it did on TV. Those are nervous. Real roots. I mean, I'm I'm literally sitting there wondering when the nerves gonna go away. So nervous. And they don't. No, they don't. You just got to channel, nervous. right? That's Even though it was my second time. You killed it. Yeah. Nervous. Oh, because you did it with Nora. Mm -hmm. That performance went by in about, it felt like it went by in about five but I'm gonna seconds. Tell you, <laughs> I'm going to yeah. tell you this, though. The one thing that they said before we got on stage was was very, very cool. It's just like, yo, this your crowd, man. This your audience. You can take that. That's all y'all. And this was the audience. Okay. <laughs> well, all right then. We are gonna do that. I don't even know y'all, but this is us. Yeah, they they they, they wasn't y'all. They let's get that very straight. Um, you know, what was nervous about it that you weren't performing for them, that you were performing for everybody at home. Yeah. Right. You, everyone's yeah, yeah. watching. Everyone's yeah. watching. The world is watching, and uh, you don't want to let, you know, them yourself. Your family, your band members, and New Orleans down. Well, it I have the to bucket imagine. List. I was doing it for the bucket list, man. We, <laughs> we been, I'm like, man, we here. Let's go. The coolest thing was hearing them clap while you were still singing. I was like, wow, y'all must really point. feel. Yeah, it was a turning point. It was like you knew you weren't just playing to somebody who was just like there in one ear and out the other. They were actually paying attention, like like soaking it all up. So it was really cool, man. It was a dope experience. You say turning point. You must have won them over, right? Oh, that's, I that's, think it happened. Like actually happened I, yeah, I right. We had the scream, the jump, the scream, but yeah. the one of them, we, you know. What was that moment? Was it a specific moment? You guys all looked at each other. It was, it was over for me when it happened. It was, it was, it was like when, when Jimmy Fallon came on saying, "They were amazing. They were great." I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> and then Jimmy yeah, yeah, said, did "Nice things." Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's what he did. It was good, right? <laughs> but years, it was, it was years, scary. years ago when I did it, when I did backgrounds with Nora Jones, I got on there and I said. I'm gonna come back here with my band, and Jimmy Fallon's gonna love my band, and that's what I said. And that's then when I got on stage, powerful. I bust out laughing because I couldn't believe that I was exactly where I was in my mind years ago. Yeah, yeah. man. I want to talk to you about that tank really quick because there's a common thread that I found in all great artists, right? Where there's this dichotomy of confidence into like you know use your own words, right? I feel big, I smell strong. To know about you. Who? Wow. To know about my poetry, boy. But then you also uh, seemingly have low expectations for all this, you, you, in the sense of you, you're very surprised by how well things are going. So you have these supremely confident artists like yourself, but then also low expectations. So can you talk about just that, just that approach to the art form? Because it's obviously paying off. And again, I find it with all these great artists that there is that relationship, and there is in you. Whoa, so... Doctor, um, <laughs> you know, I feel like I want to, like a little counselor session right quick. Need the long chair. All right. I need a pipe. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Um, you you hope for the best. You want the best, but in case anything goes a little funny, little way. You kind of want to, in the back of your mind, be like, well, you know, I, let me not put all my hopes into it because I know that, you know, it, it could possibly hurt me. But these days, I don't even look at it like that. I think it was more so in the beginning. I was just doing what I loved and in hopes that it would love me back. Um, but that was, that was it. And if anything went wrong, whatever. But, but now it's, it's like this is a lifestyle. And you can't fail at your lifestyle because you're living it. You know, if, if something weird happens within these guys, if they move on to different things, you know, we had a great time. And we did what we were supposed to do. And hopefully other things bring them just as much joy, if not more, you know? Like Destiny Child said, destiny fulfilled, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what it is. And no matter what, you'll always have the Taylor Swift we'll notebook. Always. Huh? Oh, Lord! <laughs> <laughs> he yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, he did. I love did. I don't know what that documentary, I mean, what that, um, what that notebook is. What that notebook is. 
Um, that billboard. There's a great story. Where, you know, uh, Tank did the debut album back in 2010. Somebody's getting a phone call on set. Calling. I want uh, <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hey. Uh, maybe it's Jimmy. Uh, but no, there's uh, back in 2010, you know, you make your first album because basically you just want to listen to yourself when you're you're cleaning your house, as Cleaning the story the goes. Yeah. What made you guys want to start music individually? Ooh, I grew up listening to my uncle Calvin yeah. and sax lessons, who also taught this young man here what? at in what? At UNO University? Yeah. I didn't know that. And um, that kind of started me off. He used to sit me at the piano and be like, catch me and here's that plan the Flintstones or something like that, and I just have to play it back, and that's how I got started on that. Then you're also a big hip hop fan, right? Mm hmm And that was that the first love, or was it really the um um playing like an instrument? Right. I mean, my uncle encouraged that, but I always listened to like music. I always listened totally. to hip hop. I was always listened to what my mom would listen to. Yeah. yeah, I'm a huge Jay Z fan. I was gonna fan. say, I was like, bro, we're in New York. You better say. Big Jay Z <laughs> fan, <laughs> the I'm best rapper alive. That's what's up. That's what's Since up. the best rapper died. <laughs> Man, uh, I kind of come from a musical family, but my dad he plays keys. That was a big influence for me. The church was a major influence. All my, you know, older friends and cousins was playing, and I just wanted to be a part of that. Um, I grew up with a piano in the house. So I kind of just gravitated towards it. Yeah. And um, man, then influences far like outside of that, probably D'Angelo, Prince, you know, on the major side, like just, um, I don't know. They play a lot of instruments. It really inspired me to stretch out. I was like, oh, I could do more than just play the drums or play keys, you know? That was me though. Why your voice so low and sexy? Because like? I'm trying. Right. I'm really trying to put <laughs> this on. Like, I, I rarely get to speak in the microphone. So now it's like I don't have to. Little divide drums. Lay it on yourself. I like your shirt. Sweat. Welcome to the sweat motel. Sweat motel. I'm glad you got on the bigger bill. Like, yeah. <laughs> I love you, baby. I love you too. <laughs> I saw. Uh, what made me want to do it? I saw Kirk Whalem play. He's a he's a famous uh, saxophone player, and I saw him play when I was 11. I just started playing saxophone, and he did this thing where he. We had a wireless mic and he walked off stage from this big amphitheater and he walked around the crowd and like held one note, you know, and like just like circular breathe. And I went back the next day to my band director and I was like, how do you do that? And he was like, well, you could do that. And he was like, you could also like play the saxophone like for a living. And I, I didn't even know that was an option. And uh, so uh, my band director told me that was an option and that's, that's and I wanted to do that. It's I'll take like, that yeah. option. Yeah, it's like <laughs> that, that one. That sounds really that good. One. Damn. Shoot. Um, my story was simple. I've always been playing drums since I was like three years old. My parents thought I wanted to play piano like my older brother. So they took us like both to like piano lessons. Like my first lesson, he was touching the keys and I was like doing that. And they were like, this is clearly not piano. So <laughs> uh, they got me a drum set, I ruined it. They got me another one, I ruined it. And kind of after the third one, they were like, maybe he wants to play drums, I don't know. Maybe we should get him a real one. So I've been doing this, like playing music since, since. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> since, since, like, since I can remember, I haven't not played drums. Yeah, it's just a part of you. Yeah. Do, do you guys all come from the church? I did. More my, or less? Dad, my dad was a pastor. Plays crucial parts in our lives. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you see any parallels between, like, the, the, the poetry, the slam community, and then also the church? Oh, yes. Right? Yes. Mm. They go hand in hand in a way, right? It definitely method. depends on the Tank poet. Like a preacher. Okay. Okay. It depends on the, person. Depends on the oh, yeah. poet. It depends on the poet. Yeah, because some poets Otherwise just... you have some nasty preachers. Some... <laughs> <laughs> they do. <laughs> so, yes, I mean, we're still a parallel there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we happen to have found that we all love church. Even when we, was, um, when we were gigging, the guys would make sure that no matter where we were in the world, that they would get to church on Sundays. So around our schedule, we would have to plan it out as to where the guys had to be in church on Sundays. Look, and then you, you know, do a show Saturday, and then we leave Saturday night. So Because they got to be at church Sunday. on Sunday. Bruh. So uh, it used to no matter real. what. Because <laughs> it, it used to be uh, our income source. So we were like, uh, shoot, we ain't making no money on this, so we got to get home to the, the real, the bill paying stuff. You know, I, I remember, Tables turn. Yeah. I remember there was a moment we were driving home and we were literally driving. It was three of us had to get to church. What was it? Eight o'clock, nine o'clock? Over, overnight yeah. driving to get there for nine o'clock service. It was like, we dropping him off first. I think you was eight. I was, I was like nine. I was like 10. You was like 10, 40. Yeah, he was early. He was eight. No, he was, was eight. Nine. He had an eight. I was he had nine. nine. I had a 10. ten. And so I dropped all them off accordingly. It was like, jeez, man. Thank God that burden's off of us. Yeah. You know, I'm glad they got people to do. How about the van? Uh, we're going to hop out the van. 
Yikes. We're going to um, turn it over to the audience in just a second, but I wanted to do something cool because the record's out and it's something you can listen to right after Build today. Yeah. Um, go through just really quick, maybe like pick one favorite song for each uh, member. Oh Hot Air Balloons. There's Don't 17. pick mine. Yeah, no, we might all have the same, but 17 tracks on the record. <laughs> Hot Air Balloons. Hot Air Balloons. Right now. Okay. okay. Forgiveness. Dope Guard Magic. Spaceships. <laughs> nice thing. Oh, oh, <laughs> boo. Like the whole B side. <laughs> hey, bro, I get it, though, man. Shoot. All the B sides. Colors change. Okay. Why'd you take. All right. Forgetfulness. I said. <laughs> you actually said three votes. Or... Two votes for forgetfulness. <laughs> Lazy days, man. Okay. Lazy days. Why right not? All right, cool. Let's get uh, to our first studio audience question. It'll come from uh, the front row or the second row right here. Hi. Hello. So Hi. I'm so excited to see you guys. I saw you first in L.A. at MacArthur Park a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. Free yeah. concert yeah. in the park. Yeah. Yeah. Look where you are. Congratulations. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. So my question is, what's your dream venue? Where do you hope to play one day? Staples Center. <laughs> like, like when we get to those? Um, I mean, I guess I could say Carnegie Hall or something like that. Know. You know, something just... We played at the Blue Note, and I always wanted to play the Blue Note. Um, it's way so smaller than I thought it was. He's out of, he's out <laughs> was of contention, I guess. He doesn't have any more. Um, I have a dream venue, but I, I don't really know what it is. So uh, um, a few years ago, I had a dream about being on stage with people that I care for, I love and admire, but I couldn't see their faces. And I could hear the crowd, and I knew I was on drums because I'm sitting behind them. But I don't know where this place was. So I, I feel like when I meet that place... In real life, I'll know that was the place that's my dream venue. I don't know where it is yet, though. You know, but it's very big. Superdome would Square be super Garden. dope. <laughs> <laughs> Playing a Superdome, that should happen. You, that's got to happen. Wild. That'd be, yeah. That's going to happen. What I you? know when I get there. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think it's going to resonate when I get there to this place. Like, live at Madison this is Square where you want to be. Ooh, Ooh. Square Garden. Yeah. Yeah. T-A-T-B at MSG. Yeah. I'm going to tell you Boy. what would be dope, though. NYC. To fill up the Superdome yeah. back home. It's going to happen, yo. That would be killing. Be amazing. Uh, let's get to one final studio audience question. It'll come from over here, third row. Yeah, so as a group, uh, what is your creative process behind uh, crafting an album? For example, do you come up with a vibe first that you want individual songs to fit and then craft individual songs around that? Or do you have individual songs that you really resonate with and you choose which ones end up on the album? How do you how do you work that out as a group, and how does how does being a group also influence that creative output? First of all, I start off like this. <laughs> 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 And then he makes some music behind it. I mean, you know, real talk. She'll start singing. She sent us a voice recording, or she'll just randomly do something like she just did. You know, it's the voice recording. They put the music behind it, or actually being at a sound check. Oh, that sound good, y'all. Record that while we literally sound checking. Or rehearsal. We supposed to be rehearsing neat. Rehearsal. But this song just came out of thin air, so record that. I hope y'all have y'all here for this. Or we ain't gonna remember. Did anybody record that? Or, no. yeah. or the oh, latest one, the latest one, being in a studio and it just organically just blooms out of nowhere. Facts. So that's that's the ways that it happened. Let it happen, however it happened. You know, real talk, we keep uh, a recorder one of the around. Most organic groups that I've worked with. You know what I mean? Like as far as the process go, you know, it's it's on, every show is like it might be the same songs on the slick, but they always gonna be different. Um, these are a lot of it's a lot of creative people in the circle. And we get to bounce off of each other, you know, so much that it just kind of flows out. And I'll, I heard today that, um, you know, we got free minds or something like that. And I think that's why we are able to kind of just say, OK, look, boom. And then we got a great MD, too. Our drummer's our MD. And um, he hears stuff, you know, it might be unorganized the way we hear it or just a bunch of different vibes. And he'll say, look, let me. Look, this is what it is, y'all. Let's do this. And then sometimes he do something like this. Y'all remember that movie in 84? Man. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember that movie in 84? He said it was a commercial. Yeah. You know, it was, it was, it was a commercial that they played. Before the played. movie came on. Before you Neptune put the tape in played. and then they had the, uh, you remember that? the distance. I, the game's like, going oh, on. <laughs> they don't <laughs> ever remember it. So, I keep bruh. so much music in my head, man. And I listen to a whole lot of weird, weird stuff and like soundtracks and stuff like that. Just like all these cats listen to a whole lot of weird stuff. Yeah. But it just always like stays here and kind of drills yeah. me. So it's like even on this stage, I'm thinking about music. Yeah. Like weirdly. Um, like all the time, think yeah. about something. It's music. in you, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's who you are. And they allow me to pour it out on them and they pour it out to everyone else. So 
It's really it smells like <laughs> honey. I feel like I, I need really a, thought a shower right now. Like please, hell, please, but please, please really somebody give me a towel. Hey, <laughs> no lie, no lie. These but cats are amazing instrumentalist musicians and vocalists. So it's really cool to be the person that they they listen to. It's humbling, you know. It's a blessing to have somebody that actually wants to follow you. Because if nobody following you, you can't lead nobody. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's cool, cool. You guys played uh, two shows in New Orleans this past weekend, and then that's going to kind of carry you through uh, summer. You're basically touring all summer long. But that's, We've been yeah. touring since we... February. Because... Bro, since, <laughs> we've been touring since February. Since way before Tiny Desk, for sure. Yeah. Been, yeah. Been, but even even crazier since Tiny Desk, it's been nonstop. Yeah. Crazy, Yes, bro. it's been nonstop. I, where, it's crazy. Where can we... Um, I'm sorry. I say I could count on fingers and toes how many times we've been home. Oh, I bet. Right? And probably one. Yeah. 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 But, but I remember when there was a big group in New Orleans called the Soul Rebels, and they used to um, they travel all the time, and we used to say, "Man, y'all going here? Y'all going there? That's amazing!" And they used to be like, "Man, <laughs> right?" <laughs> they used to and so we didn't now I under yeah. I understand what they mean. Yeah. Because being home is such a blessing. Yeah. You don't realize it when you're always there, but you run home, ooh, gotta go get me some crawfish, gotta go to the daiquiri, you gotta spend, to a, it all, gotta spend a little time with my family, ooh, gotta go get your open mic night. Open. You know, you're trying to do everything you in can one day. in like one or two days. It's crazy. So the road is a blessing, but the road home is a blessing too. It's even it's, more it's a even blessing. more of a blessing. Yeah. Because it's your family. No, absolutely. I'll be really happy tomorrow morning. Yeah. Right. Be back right. Morning. Especially knowing me, you got 20 got, children. No, I got. <laughs> I got, right. I got five kids and a wife, and I'll be missing my family. On you go shout out. Are you guys headed home tomorrow? Hey, Nikki. Yeah. Yes. Oh, amazing. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, for those concert tickets or uh, dates, I should say, all summer long, where can we head for that? We can. Is there a website? Is there the best of fun? Tankandthebangers.com. There you go. One more time. Tankandthebangers.com. Nice Wait. And um, I love it. They're telling me we're out of time, guys, but thank you so much. The, the record again, Green Balloon, out and available everywhere right now. One more time for Tank and the Bangas. Thank y'all. Thank you, guys.